Hi everyone, this is Christina the Crafty Kemi, and today I'm going to show you how to make two cityscape cards using these two backgrounds. I did some ink blending with Distressed Oxide inks. At the top we have Chip Sapphire, then Wilted Violet, Fired Brick, Carved Pumpkin, and then Fossilized Amber. And then after I had blended those using some makeup brushes that I had bought on Amazon, I also decided to take some water from a paintbrush, a thin paintbrush, and then actually flick it onto the card and then lift it up using a paper towel. So you do see some like faded white spots in the background. And then I actually took my Pentel white gel pen and added some other dots around it to try and make a starry sky. So you'll also notice that I created these skyscraper buildings using the Sizzix Tim Holtz Cityscape Metropolis die set that you see over here. And I also used a stencil from the die cuts and traced it onto yellow cardstock. And then I actually cut the yellow cardstock into the shape of the buildings. That way, when you see it on the other side, any of the windows that were die cut out actually have a yellow light to them. So it looks like a nice lit background. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. There are eight buildings in total in the die set. There are also other pieces that you can cut out and add to layer on top. You can actually see in the picture of this die cut that there are smaller pieces to try and add some interest to your buildings. But in this case, since I'm doing a silhouette, I actually didn't want to add any of those tiny pieces. So I just made eight buildings out of cardstock, and as I said, I used the negative space to trace out yellow cardstock and to hear it. So on this background, I'm actually going to do one layer right across the bottom, and I'm choosing the three largest buildings as the background. So here are the three biggest buildings. They actually take up the entire five and a quarter inch by four inch card front that I have here. And I'm actually using one 10 pound white cardstock from Staples for the background. And then some Nina colored cardstock. It actually came in a sample kit. And I bought that from Amazon. So that's for the yellow and the black. I'll also have all the links for all the supplies I used in the video below, or excuse me, in the description below. And right now all I'm doing is taking some Mod Podge glue, which is a liquid adhesive that dries matte, and I'm just adhering them to the card base. And you do have to be careful when using liquid adhesive on Distress Oxide backgrounds, because if you end up with glue in the wrong space, you'll end up with something like this dot here. I don't know if you can see it on camera. Let's see if I can zoom in for you a bit. But there's a bright red dot there that as I was making these buildings, I had the background sitting on my table and some of the adhesive actually stuck and made a bright spot and then a glue spot. So I'm actually going to attempt to cover that up with a building if I can, or maybe another stamp. So this is a really simple thing to do. Um, I can tell you that in regards to the die cutting, die cutting the buildings themselves in black did not take very long. Um, I used my Sizzix Big Shot Plus and just cut them all out on one sheet of black. And with the yellow pieces, they actually took a bit longer. Um, it probably took me about an hour or an hour and a half to actually get all of the buildings with yellow in the back glued in and, and cut out. And what you're seeing me do here, I had a little bit too much adhesive and I am worried about the Distress Oxide background. So I'm just patting it off on my glass mat and I'll clean that up later. Here we go, we have all three of those larger buildings on the background. I do see that this point over here is not really adhering very well. It looks like it's coming off of the yellow cardstock. So go ahead and glue that back down. And with the three buildings all adhered to the back, 
I'm not going to try and set my other buildings in a way that kind of makes sense. I'm going to take this really tall building and try and cover up that glue spot that I had made. And then to try and cover up the base of that, I'll just have another building on top. And then probably just cover up the seams in between the other buildings just to make it look like you're seeing this from a far away area and everything kind of looks like it's in the same plane, but it's actually just layered. So I think I have my buildings where I want them. I slowly start adding them to the background. Once again, just using Mod Podge matte ink. I also feel like I added too much glue on this one, so I'm just going to pat it off and clean it up off my glass mat later. Right. Cover up my little boo-boo over there. Works out pretty well. And I'm trying to make sure that I also get, oh, I'm sorry, I mean not to be in camera, all the, the tiny pieces of the building in here, just because you don't want them flopping off of your card after somebody gets it. I'm just going to pat off again. I have made cards before. I spent all this effort making them, and after the person gets it, I notice that they keep it, and then I get a little OCD, and I almost want to fix it because I start seeing <laughs> pieces come off. Um, I usually see this more often with my tape runner. Uh, I use my tape runner sparingly because the refills can be expensive. And so I do need to <laughs> make sure that I either use liquid adhesive more when appropriate or that I just use more tape runner. It'd probably be the easier solution and maybe find some cheaper tape runner. Right now I'm using the Xyron tape runner. The refills tend to be about 7 bucks for the smaller cartridge and then $11 for the larger one, which is not terribly expensive, but I go through a mini tape runner probably in a week, depending on the number of cards I'm making. And the larger one, I actually have not run out yet. So I might need to start using my larger tape runner more often in order to offset that. All right. Make sure that's down. So now you see that I have a nice city skyline on the background. And I have these buildings over here for the second background. And what you'll notice is um, I was actually using this as a practice. So I used a small piece of cardstock. But then after I had made it, I really liked it and decided it would be useful. So I cut some scrap white cardstock into a four by five and a quarter inch size. Uh, added the background to the top and then added this black piece to the bottom just to blend in with the buildings I'm about to attach to it. Unfortunately, uh, I lined the black cardstock up to the bottom and the background up to the top, and I missed a sliver of white here. So I'm just going to make sure that my buildings cover up that white line there and it's not seen on the finished card. So you already saw me adhere the buildings to this background. I'm just going to go ahead and do this off camera so that I'm not boring you to death with just gluing things on a card. <laughs> Be right back. Okay, so I have my two backgrounds now with all of the buildings adhered. You'll notice with this one, I put one of each of the buildings in the die set. And in this one, there's actually a lot more buildings. And that was because I was trying to cover up that black section on the bottom, in addition to that white line at the top. So I didn't want to repeat any buildings. So if you notice this dome building that is on the card right here, let's see if I can get a close up for you. This dome building here, I actually cut the top off and then turned the building upside down. And that's what you see in this building right here. And then I think there is one other one I did that with where I actually took this building here. I cut off this fancy top hat looking type of thing on the building and I just adhered it over here. So that way I don't have any of the same building. I don't see any repeats, but I still fill up that card. So it's just another way to use your dies in a different way and add some variety to your card. And what you see here are two card bases. I have a block of cards from Paper Studio. It's a brand I've only found at Hobby Lobby. And these are both, 
I don't know if they're navy blue or charcoal gray. It's like a bluish gray though. And what's nice is that when you open them on the inside, it's white. So if you want to write anything, design it. Um, I'm not one to design the inside of my cards, but if you do, it's convenient because then you can stamp, write, do whatever you want. And you don't have to use a gel pen for it or add another piece of cardstock. So all I'm going to do now is get my Xyron runner that I was mentioning before. So that's uh, this tool over here. And I'm just going to adhere the card fronts to the card bases. And since these are five and a quarter by four inch card fronts, um, I'm going to have an eighth of an inch on each side for the most part. These are five and a half by four and a quarter card bases. So turning this around, you'll notice that it's a scrap piece. I was practicing with my cloud stencil. Um, and you see it on my intro picture. That's why I was practicing. I was trying to get the technique down on getting the exact amount of ink that you need to create the cloud background, but not do what I did here. If you notice, it's like too much ink. So it took a bit, but ended up getting it down and did an entire eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock using that cloud stencil. And I believe I got the cloud stencil off of Not Too Shabby. Um, if you're interested, I will definitely place it in the description below. All right, so here you see, just adhered that to the card base. I'm just gonna do the same thing here. And you can use any type of tape runner. Um, honestly, the only reason why I have this Siren one is I know someone who worked at HSN and was able to get me a discount on this, the Mega Runner, and several refills. And it wasn't until after I started running out that I realized, wow, these refills are not the cheapest. But I, I honestly do like the tape runner itself. It's not bad. All right. So now we have our cards. The next thing we're going to do is start some stamping and embossing. Uh, I do want to get some happy birthday sentiment on one of them, and I haven't used this You Are Amazing Remember That sentiment before, so I'm, I'm probably going to use this one and the Celebrate. These two stamp sets, um, two different places. I got this one online from theton.com, and this is the Pyrotechnics stamp. And technically you can layer it since it has these poofs and then these more stringy fireworks. Um, for me, I'm not going to actually layer the stamps though. I'm going to put up probably one burst and then one dotted firework to try to show a time difference, I guess. Because as a firework starts to dissipate, it starts to look like this. And in the beginning, it kind of looks like, like these. And this stamp set is, the brand name is called Momenta. And it may also be another Hobby Lobby exclusive brand. But I just like that it was, I think, $5 for the set. But it came with many, many different types of sentiments, which is good because you can never have too many sentiments, honestly. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and use my Platform Stamper by Tim Holtz. I am terrible with an acrylic block. Um, I've tried perfecting the technique and I'm still only 80% of the way, or 80% of the time, doing it flawlessly. So rather than ruin my cards, I do prefer to use my Platform Stamper. And I try to use the magnets. The only thing with these magnets is you can't get them too close to the hard edges because then it doesn't actually stamp correctly. So I think I'm going to start by just, actually, I'm going to stop here. The reason for that is that I did not have my heat gun ready. So rather than stamping this with some ink and then not having the gun ready, I'd rather have it plugged in. So I'm actually going to use some Letterate Embossing Ink by Ranger. Um, I bought this at Hobby Lobby again. It was the only one available at the time that I went. I think in the future I want to try the Versafine Watermark Ink just because I haven't been too thrilled with this. Um, and maybe it's just my technique. So I would like to try another one just to see if it's me or the ink. <laughs> So first thing I'm going to do is put the sentiment down. 
by this particular card, and this one's going to say, you are amazing, remember that. I'm going to try and center it on the card. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. Uh, I'm not a perfectionist when I line things up. That's probably why a lot of times I will actually have some crooked sentiment, but in all honesty, I haven't seen one person who pointed that out to me yet. Granted, I don't actually have a bunch of crafty friends. That may be part of it. Um, if I gave it to a graphic designer, maybe they would notice more. And I just noticed that my sentiment is kind of sticking to the card and lifting it up. So I'm going to go ahead and rub this stamp on my hand, try and get some oil on that, just to try and prevent that from sticking. Try and center that again. Maybe a little too left. Alright. Better. Much better. Alright, so since I am going to be embossing, I want to try and move everything off to the side. I'm going to get my funnel paper ready. And one thing I almost forgot is I do have an embossing bag. Clearly it's not in that drawer. It's on the side. And I have it in this little container so it doesn't get all over the place. This is my Inka Dinka Do embossing powder bag. And what this will do is it will put powder on the card and make it anti-static so that if I got any finger oil on it or anything else, um, it's not going to get all over the place. Just keep in mind that um, some people after using the powder bag will use a baby wipe to get that white powder off. I don't recommend it if you're using a Distress Oxide background. You will wipe some of the ink off since it is water reactive. So in this case, I'm just going to deal with the powder. And actually, I don't even notice that it's there. So I think it should be fine for this project. Alright, so I'm just taking my clear ink and putting it on the sentiment. I'm going to make the sentiment silver and the fireworks are going to be in copper and a purple glitter. Um, I'll go over the embossing powders in a sec. For now, I'm just going to try and get a good impression here. Take a look at it. I'm going to try one more time just to make sure. It does look pretty good, but last thing I want is to add the embossing powder and then find out, oh, well, I didn't really make a good impression. All right, so just doing that one more time. I mean, at worst, I guess I could re-ink it and emboss it and do like a, a double layer embossing. But I like to try and do things right the first time. Alright, so I'm going ahead, pouring the embossing powder down. Shake it off. And I think we're doing pretty well on that. Now I'm going to go ahead and get my gun and put it on the low setting. And I am just going to do this from the front of the card, since I don't think it's going to work from the back. Let's keep doing this for a bit until it starts to melt. There you go. Try not to keep it in the same spot for too long. Alright, I'm going to put the heat gun down and show you the embossing that was done. Nice shiny, you are amazing, remember that. Did get some embossing powder all over the place. Oh, that's actually adhesive with embossing powder on it now. That's all right. So, I mean, thankfully I am putting fireworks on this, so having that little bit of embossing powder of silver in the background, probably just go fine with it. So, I actually think that came out pretty well. I'm going to go ahead and funnel this embossing powder back in. So about the embossing powders, um, the metallic ones I have here are from WOW. Um, what I like about their embossing powders is they actually have anti-static in the embossing powder in addition to in their jars. So if you are using WOW embossing powder, um, I've seen some people where they put it into Tupperwares to make it easier. Uh, just keep in mind that you will be losing that anti-static container if you choose to transfer it to another one. Um, this embossing powder I, unfortunately, I don't know the name of it, but it's from Hero Arts. It was in the May Crafty Monthly Kit. And what I like about this is it actually has glitter in it. Um, 
And for fireworks, I feel like they're very shiny, glittery, and bright. I thought that would be good. And then to offset it with this nice copper to go with the purple, um, I really like the color combination on that. But before we get to the fireworks, I still got to print or stamp my other sentiment on the other card. Try and get this stuck down. There we go. And here we're going to use the Celebrate stamp. So I'm going to take this off the previous one and just wash that later. I feel like cleaning up is not really the most exciting thing to show people. Oh, sorry, got a text message. Alright. Turn this off. Sorry about that. Alright. So, it looks like I had some ink on here from before because I see a little bit of an impression already. But it came out clear, so that should be fine. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and stamp up. I'm trying to get a nice impression. onto the card. This one actually looks pretty good. I don't think I need to ink it again. This one's also a little easier to see. I'm going to get the Silver Wow Embossing Powder. I think it's called Metallic Silver. Yeah. Get that on there. Oh, and I forgot to use my, my powder bag, so we'll see how this comes out if I get too much sticking to the card. It looks like it's actually doing alright, but I do recommend using the powder bag beforehand. I have a terrible habit of forgetting until it's too late. Alright, just going to go ahead and try and get that hot. The gun's already warmed up from before, so this shouldn't take too long. You can always tell when it's done because you'll see it's like melting and looks shiny, whereas before it's done with the embossing powder, it, it kind of just looks greeny and, and dull, honestly. Oh, sorry. So, here we go. You see the celebrate sentiment on there. This one's actually going to be a birthday card. The other one, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with yet, but I'm sure I will figure that out. Alright, just going to start cleaning up my surface to try and get some more embossing in. Alright. So we're done with the silver for now. I'm going to put that to the side. And now is the fun part. The sentiments I feel like are more stressful because there's a chance you'll ruin the background, but I really do like adding the embellishments part. So we're going to continue with this card and pick two fireworks from this set. I think I'm going to use this one. And in this case, I'm not too worried about getting it onto the buildings because it's going to give it a little more dimension like it's layered. The fireworks are on the outside, the buildings are in the background, and I think it'll actually look pretty neat. So I'm using two of the smaller ones. You obviously can't fit something like this on there. I feel like this would be more of like a card where that would be the entire background would just be fireworks, but I do want to see how that would look at some point. And I think actually what I may do is, since I want these to be two different colors, I'm going to actually go ahead and prep this card for purple and the next card for purple so that I don't have to switch out in between. It just helps with the embossing. Let me put my cover on that till I'm ready. So this is over here. I would like to use this one, I think right over here. Just keep that in the corner. And actually, let me try and once again, just get the stickiness off this a little bit just so it doesn't completely stick to the card. Maybe we'll do one right here. That would look good. It's not in the way of the other one, which is perfect. Do have a magnet in the way. That's why I wasn't getting far enough down. But I think we're good now. Alright. So, I'm 
just going to go ahead and ink up only one at a time because then I'll pull off the other one once it's done being used. Okay, I'm also going to move my stamp set out of the way. I have everything ready. This is mostly just so that... Oh, I think I actually inked up the wrong one. <laughs> this is mostly just so that I don't lose any time of the ink drying in between. I can emboss a little quicker. And using the same color, I can use the same sheet for both. So I did start inking this one up first. Got a nice impression there. Once again, forgot to use my powder bag. I'm really terrible at that. I gotta find a way to make a habit of it. Alright, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pour this purple glitter embossing powder on top. Put that to the side for now. Take the stamp off so I avoid getting it on my next card. Go ahead, get stuck in there. up the stamp. Okay. That impression on the card. Looks pretty good. <laughs> Forgot my powder bag again after I was just talking about it. That's right. At some point I will get the hang of that. Alright, so I think we're looking pretty awesome actually this off and we'll wash it later. Um, go ahead and get my heat gun. Watch the fireworks. <laughs> this one's a little harder to see once it's done. Um, it almost just becomes more glittery. I don't know how to describe it. It doesn't really get that shiny look that you expect. So I believe that's finished. I'm going to keep going. Just finish the other one. I actually think with this glitter embossing, it actually makes the... it'll turn more flat actually once it's ready, but then the glitter is definitely attached and not going anywhere. Alright, so I'm done with that for now. See how it looks. And try and get that in the light. But I know it's harder to see on camera, but it actually is a, a nice. Um, oh, there we go. A nice purple and shiny look to it. It's looking pretty good. I am getting a little bit of warping. Um, usually, what I do when I'm done with my cards, I will put them under a bunch of die cut plates and put my die cut machine on top of that with the cards underneath the die cut plates and they usually flatten out over time. So I will probably do that with these cards since they are warping ever so slightly. Okay, so one more set of fireworks and then these cards are pretty much ready to roll. Alright, funnel out the, the glitter. Maybe I'll actually remember to use my powder bag this time. <laughs> Let's see. Alright, so we're going to be using the powder embossing pad last, excuse me, powder, uh, copper, <laughs> copper embossing powder last. Um, so I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to pick out my stamps ahead of time, get them on the platform, and then do one card after the other just to save some time and ensure that I don't have any ink drying out. And there we go. I finally remembered. Okay. Since this one has the spotty one, the next one I want to use is going to be more of a burst. Go ahead and try and make that a little less sticky. Alright, so put that offset a little bit. I don't want it on the same line as the other one because usually when you see fireworks, they're not all going in the same plane. Okay, and side for now. 
now. Try not to touch it with my fingers. As you add more finger oil to it, the embossing powder will stick. This is something to keep in mind. Alright. go. Yay, I remembered again. So proud of myself. <laughs> it's really sad, actually. Um, Alright, enough of that. So, I'm going to prep the next one. This one's going to be more of the the faded burst, since I already have one that's kind of like a string fresh burst. I'm going to put that right over here. Alright, I got everything picked up, everything ready to go. I'm going to remember to do this one first this time. Just ink it up. Very good impression on this one. Go ahead and open the copper. There we go. Not bad. I'm right, gonna put that to the side for now and take the stamp off. I actually got purple embossing powder stuck to that. I'm gonna make sure I put that stamp in the right spot now that I just picked it up, but. I wanted to get some of that purple glitter off before I did it. Alright. So, nope, oh, still in the same spot. We're good. Go ahead and ink that up. Maybe it really is just my technique, because so far the ink has been doing really well this entire session. Alright, we're done with that for now. Oh, perfect. Very good impression on that one. Go ahead. Pop her powder down. Love it. It looks very good. I think I have some fuzzy on it, but I'm sure that'll come off once I'm done. Alright. We're done with the sta stamp platform. I'll put that to the side. I do want to get this embossing powder out of the way before heat emboss, just in case. This is just um, copy paper, computer paper. All right, done with this guy too. Almost done. All right, get the heat gun out for the last time. Yeah, it definitely had some cat hair on there or something. It, it looks like it blew away. Oh, very nice. I love how that copper looks. Very, very nice. Alrighty. Whoops, something just fell off my desk. <laughs> I'll pick that up later. Alright, so we have our two cards with the sunset background. We got two fireworks onto each of them. We got cityscape buildings. We got a nice sentiment. This one is going to be a birthday card. And this one, I'm not sure yet. But I guess it could also be a birthday card. We'll see. But thanks for watching. Um, I'm going to try to post a video once every two weeks. We'll see how that goes with my schedule. And uh, stay subscribed, like if you want, comment if you have questions or just want to send a message. And thank you very much.